Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing, and this is our how to make a t-shirt quilt video tutorial. If you're just joining us now, this is actually the last tutorial in the series. We're gonna be going over how to mark your quilt and quilt it on your home sewing machine with a walking foot. This is very beginner friendly. It doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of skill. You're basically just gonna be sewing a straight line, which we've done a lot of to get to this point. We have a pattern plus all the materials you need in order to make this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you get the interfacing and the applique pressing sheet from us, we'll give you the pattern for free. The videos are free to watch, but a great way to say thanks is to get your supplies from us. All right, so when I left you, we had just finished quilting our quilt top. Now, what we need to do next is we need to prepare it for quilting. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna mark our quilting lines. So I'm gonna use a couple of different tools to do that. I'm gonna show them to you now. The friction gel pens are my primary tool of choice when it comes to marking fabric. I love them because you can mark it and it will go away with heat and stay away with heat. Now, there are folks, and if you're a beginner quilter, you may not have heard this term. Uh, we call them the cool police who like to poo poo on these because if they do get cold, then the lines will come back. Um, but you just have to throw it in the dryer again or iron it and it'll go away. Um, you wouldn't want to obviously iron your um, shirts, but if you threw them in the dryer on a hot setting, you're good. They're going to go away just fine. And I've got a quilt behind me that traveled all across the country on all manner of postal services, probably in cold uh, vehicles. And I marked all over the top of that and no marks came back, folks. So people like to complain, but I think people sometimes just like to complain and we all know them and we don't have to always listen to them. Um, the other thing though about these is sometimes when I mark on them, it will leave when the mark goes away a little bit lighter line. Like it will permanently lighten the fabric in that area once the line is gone. Now, if you're gonna stitch right over the top of your line, no one's ever gonna know and it's totally fine. But if you're worried and maybe you're gonna be a little wobbly, maybe you might want to do a little bit of a test uh, mark where you just do a little mark here in an inconspicuous spot, maybe right in that corner, put an iron on it, see if it discolors it at all. And if you're nervous about that, then you can use a chalk marking tool in its place. It's a little bit harder to get off, but it totally works. So these come in a couple of different colors. Um, Good to have a couple, then you can see no matter where you're at. But I also have, and I didn't share this in our supplies video, but I'm sharing it with you now because it's a good tool to have, this Soline Chalk uh, Pencil. It's a mechanical pencil. It is really good for going over black because you can see it really well when we mark and because obviously neither of these are gonna show up on that. It's not gonna work. So those are your options uh, that I highly recommend. Now, before we get marking, we have to talk a little bit about batting choice. So I really prefer whenever I'm quilting in general, but especially on my home sewing machine, is that to use a 100% cotton or an 80-20. That means 80% cotton, 20% polyester batting. I do not use polyester ever when I'm quilting on my home sewing machine. The reason is polyester is man-made and it is slick and your fabric is gonna wanna slide around on that. But if you put cotton fabric, especially with this woven interfacing and your cotton backing, and you layer all that up together, it's gonna kind of want to stick and stay in place. And that way you will have less lumps and bumps on the bottom of your quilt, which can happen sometimes. So I highly recommend going Quilter's Dream Batting. We have some available for you if you would like to grab some, um, but it is a really, awesome product. I love it. It is not see-through in the slightest. So if you want to go with a really wild and crazy backing fabric that maybe matches the interests of whoever it is that you like, uh, you can do that and you don't have to worry about it showing through to the front. So that is not the case with all battings that are available. And they're also very affordable and it's 100% grown and manufactured in the U.S. So that's always a good thing too. All right, but the big thing about batting, besides what fiber content you wanna have in it, is how densely you can quilt without it pulling apart. Because over time, as the quilt is used and washed, that batting can separate and it can get clumpy and lumpy, and we don't want that. And each batting company has its own requirements to how closely or densely you need to quilt in order for that to not happen. Quilter's Dream, I believe it's something like seven inches. And so the markings that I'm gonna show you here were perfectly fine for that. Some quilt battings though, you have to quilt within three inches 
of each other, and that's from corner to corner. So if we're talking from here to here, this is a 12 inch block, but you can't measure that I've quilted around this and say, okay, it's 12 inches apart. You have to go on the diagonal. And when we put it on the diagonal, then we're looking at about something like 16 and seven eighths. That's a significantly larger number. So that's what you have to look at when you're looking at how closely you need to be when you are um, quilting and maybe add or maybe take away some lines depending on what your requirements are. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I mark this quilt. Essentially what we're gonna do is we are going to stitch straight through these corners. We're gonna mark it straight down the corner on the side here, straight down the corner on the side here. And because that's not dense enough in order to meet our needs, we're also going to do the same thing in the middle of each side going in both directions. And what this does is it creates enough texture or quilting to hold everything together, but it's not gonna be so dense and textured that the quilting is gonna take away from the designs of the t-shirt. And it also makes it really easy to accomplish in a quick way on your home sewing machine. If I were going to do this on my long arm, I would do probably a really large, loose stipple meander uh, because I could do that fairly quickly as well. And again, I don't want to take away from the t-shirt designs. I want to have a nice all over design that is going to just hold it together, look pleasing. That's all this is. You know, it's kind of utilitarian at this point. You could have some fun with it and certainly you could go crazy with it, but I prefer the all over utilitarian that you know, does a job of holding those three layers together, but doesn't take away from the star of the show, which is our t-shirt designs. So to get started, I've got my quilt turned on its side and I'm just lining up my ruler with the points. So I've got a point here and a point here, we're together. And then I'm gonna take that pen and I'm just gonna mark straight down the center and I'm making sure to angle that pen inward so that way it's right in contact with that ruler so I got a nice straight line. Now it's a little lighter over that dolphin. I'm totally fine with that. I'm not gonna worry about going super dark with it uh, because I do, like I said, I want that to go away later and I've never had a problem with these but I also don't wanna layer it on super thick. And I'm just going to work my way down doing this. All right, so when you're marking this at home, you're gonna do that through every single diagonal going this way. And we're gonna go straight through every single cornerstone. But that's not all, we have to do some more beyond that. So what I'm gonna do to get my line here is I'm gonna figure out where my six inch mark is, which is right here. So this is where I need to pass through. And I'm just marking that on my t-shirt because these are 12 inch blocks, so I wanna be halfway in between where that is and have it go through there. So I'm gonna start off by lining up that section there. And then I'm gonna take the 45 degree line of my ruler and I've got that lined up against this piecing line. That's gonna give me my first indication of where I need to be. And that will create the same line. It'll be nice and parallel to here. But basically 45 lined up with your seam and your ruler lined up with six inches of top and bottom. So now I can go ahead and mark the rest of this, get my quilting line all the way out to the side. And if you need to scooch the ruler a little bit, that's fine, just keep it in line with the, the line that you've already created. All right, now I'm doing this kind of light here. I'm sure you guys can see though a little bit of what's going on here. So we're gonna keep on going down and I'm gonna mark this one next. I'm gonna mark six inches here where I need to go through and also at this bottom corner. So now what I can do is I can line up where my ruler or my line ended here and then I can line it up with my next hash mark and I can carry that through. And if you're not perfect, it really is not the end of the world 
because this is a really long line, you have a lot of movement that you can make as you're working through this and going across your quilt with actual quilting. I'm just gonna keep working my way across doing the same movements, just connecting those dots. Right, so we can see that we have lines going through our center or well our mid, our center of our block and then also the quarters and you're going to want to do that all in one direction through all the blocks on your quilt and then we're going to switch and we're going to do the exact same thing going in the other direction now since it's super repetitive i'm just going to mark out this block here so you can see what it's going to look like once you're complete and you're ready to start sewing I should probably also point out that when you're in your outside cornerstones, you're not gonna be going straight to the corner. So what you're gonna have, I've got my point lined up over here and then also here, and you can see that my ruler isn't going all the way to the edge, but it, where it's hitting is about actually a quarter inch away from the edge of that quilt, which means that once I put my quilt binding on, that quilting is gonna go right to the edge where the binding is. All right, so I have this top quilt block marked out and you can see I've got grid lines going across in both directions, crisscrossing that block. And when we take a measure, remember we want to measure from the point. So I've got the edge of the block to the center here and that is measuring just at about six inches. So with my Quilter's Dream batting, that's going to be plenty. I will be able to quilt this. I will not have to worry about the batting separating over time because I have met the minimum requirements for density of quilting and we are good to go. Now, if you are doing something where you need to be within three inches for your batting choice, then you're going to want to bisect this further. So you're going to want to measure out where three inches is and you're going to want to then mark in both directions going across that way. So when you're choosing your batting, that's something you definitely wanna look at is the quilt density requirements. Make sure you're meeting that. And if you don't wanna be super dense, go with something like Quilter's Dream where you don't have to be. All right, when we come back, I will have marked all of this and we will be ready to start uh, sewing our, or quilting our quilt. If you have never basted a quilt before, we have a video tutorial that is dedicated just to that. It is in our beginner quilting series. It shows you how to make a quilt sandwich where we layer up our top with our batting and our backing fabric and put pins in it and make sure that everything is nice and flat on the backside as well. So that way we are ready to start quilting. So if you have not done that before, take a pause, go watch that video. The tutorial is great. It shows you exactly what you need to do in order to do this on your own. And then we can come back and watch as we go with walking foot quilting to finish this up. Now through the magic of editing, I've got my quilt entirely marked, basted and pinned together. So we're ready to quilt. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things that make this process easier. Only one of them is an absolute must have. If your machine comes with an extended base, go ahead and grab that. It's gonna help keep the weight of your quilt from drooping down, make it easier to quilt your quilt on your home sewing machine. So grab that. If your machine did not come with one, you can get one to fit. Um, so Steady is a great company that offers machines like that. You just need to know your model and they can make it work. Um, these are a pair of Machiner's quilting gloves. Mine are very well used. I use them a lot with free motion quilting. We have an entire series on that if that's something you wanna check out and get used to. Um, so it's got some chalk on there, but it doesn't transfer to the quilt. Um, what it does is it, 
It's a very lightweight pair of gloves that has some grippies on the fingertips. It helps you move the quilt through easier. I use this whenever I'm quilting on my home sewing machine or when I'm binding, just because it helps reduce wrist, shoulder, and back strain, so I can just grip it better. Now I have tried gardening gloves, which is the cheapo hack for this. It's, it's not the same at all. So don't let anybody tell you it is. Um, these are amazing and way better than something you're gonna pick up at the garden center. And lastly, we're gonna need a walking foot. This is the must have tool that you absolutely have to have. It usually has either a claw like this or a bar that's gonna sit on top of the part that goes up and down on your sewing machine. And what it has is a second set of feed dogs on the top. That's what this is right here. So what you're able to do is you have the feed dogs on top that are moving your quilt through and the feed dogs on your machine underneath the quilt that are help moving it through. So it helps anytime you're using three layers like this, you wanna use a walking foot when you're going through it because it's gonna move everything through at the same rate and it help decrease the bunching. Now, the first quilts I ever made, I did not know what this was. It had come through with my machine, but it just looked like such a crazy foot. I didn't know that I was supposed to use it and I quilted a queen size quilt with a flannel backing, just with my regular presser foot. And it would have been so much easier if I would have known what this was and put it on. So I'm gonna put it on my machine now, and then we're gonna be able to get ready and get started. So first thing I wanna do is press the back of my foot that it's gonna release the bottom foot, make it a little easier to get everything off. Now, everybody's sewing machine might be a little different, so make sure you're uh, looking at your manual. Next, I have to take this screw and just loosen it. In some machines, you have to take it all the way off because you're putting it through like a circle instead of having, like on this one, there's a little claw that attaches to it. So again, might be a little different for your machine, but the main concept is gonna be the same. Next, I'm gonna take this claw attachment and I'm gonna put it over this part that goes up and down. And that's what's gonna control the feed dogs as I go. So I've got that claw going around it. Again, if you've got a bar, you just want it to sit on top. Now I'm gonna take my screwdriver. I'm gonna tighten up the side screw. Now I store all my regular, like my screw, my regular piece that goes on my machine in the compartment that I took off to put my expandable base on. And so I don't lose anything because let me tell you, I have and have had to rebuy feet. So this is a great way to keep it safe until you need it again. All right, we're gonna do one more thing here before we get started. I'm going to bring my needle down and back up again just by turning the hand wheel on the side. You always wanna turn that toward you, never back. And that's gonna bring up my bobbin thread. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a tug. That way I'm able to bring my bobbin thread to the top when we get started so we don't end up with a big mess in the back. If you want, you can also match your bobbin thread color to your backing. That's all totally up to you. There's one more thing I have to do to get ready and that's roll my quilt so it's gonna fit underneath the throat of my sewing machine. So since my lines are running diagonal across the quilt, what I wanna do is start at the very corner and just start rolling in. So I'm gonna kind of start with a little bit bigger corner and I, I wanna keep this as tight as I can because then I'm gonna be able to fit it underneath my throat plate, which is very, very important. All right, I have reached the center diagonal. In this case, I'm gonna be starting with the line just to the side of where my uh, cornerstone is, and I'm stitching all the way across, and then I'm just going to unroll my quilt and start stitching the next line. So it really is a very repetitive process. There's nothing hard about it. It is just a, it takes time. That's all it is. Um, we're essentially gonna be sewing straight lines and with the gloves and all the other prep that we've taken to keep this roll as neat and tidy as possible, it won't be so bad. Um, but we're just gonna do this one quarter essentially at a time, unrolling a little bit as we go. So I will show you the first one and the second one and then you know it's you it got the process and we will pop back when it's all done. All right, so I'm starting off by putting as much of the weight of the quilt in my lap as possible from the rolled side. Then I'm gonna line up where I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down and back up again. And that will grab that bobbin thread so that I can grab it, my top thread, a little hard to do with the gloves on, 
and pull it all the way to the top. So this is my bobbin thread that's now coming to the top. It'll make sure we don't end up with a big nasty thread nest underneath. So I'm starting a little bit off. I'm just gonna put that needle down. Now I've got this side completely unrolled. This is where we wanna have a lot of the weight as much as we can on the table. It's gonna help the quilting go easier and also ease the strain on your body. Now you can increase your stitch length. I'm increasing mine to a 3.5. We're not piecing, we're just trying to hold all those layers together. And I am not pushing the quilt, I'm, I'm just guiding it. Like if I let this go with all my hands on it, the quilt is gonna move through. You do not want to be shoving it through. But you do wanna have your hands on either side to guide it. Now, sometimes you have to do adjustments in your lap to get things to be laying in a little better. And I am just using a plain white thread for the top. I find it, it, that it blends a lot better than you think it will. Um, and then when you do have those white shirts, it just kind of hides completely. If you find that it's bunching, like it's bunching a little bit here, just lift up that presser foot and it kind of releases itself and then you won't have pleats in your shirt. come all the way to the end you can go ahead and break those threads you can also leave them long if you want and what we're going to do is we're going to pull that back then we're going to drag the entire quilt top towards you and here's the important part we're going to put as much of the weight on top as we can and we're going to roll back until we hit the next line so i can see right here here's my next line this is the one that i need to stitch with I like to get that needle down to kind of hold everything in place and then fuss with getting as much up on the table as you can. Some people find it helpful to put a second table over here to help hold the weight of the quilt. Um, that's totally up to you and, and what kind of setup you have. going I'm kind of grabbing the fabric and just pulling it apart so I've got a nice taut area to work with all right we are just going to keep repeating this process until we have quilted this entire half of the quilt one thing I also like to do every once in a while this bobbin's getting a little low I just kind of take a peek and see if I think we got enough to make it through the next row, I think we do in this case. Some people like to wind up a few bobbins before they get started, that way they're not like, have to stop when they're on a roll and wind one, but uh, that's totally up to you. So 
I ran out of thread right here. So I'm gonna show you how to start it up in the middle of a row. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and put our walking foot in the down position. And I've left a long tail on my bobbin so that way I can pull it up. So we're gonna go down and up right on top of the stitching line. I'm starting about an inch or so back from where I ran out of thread. So now when I pull that back to the side, I should be able to pull on this top thread and you can see the bobbin thread has come up. So I have two threads here. I've got my bobbin thread and my top thread. Now I'm gonna position those so that they're in between the feet of that walking foot. And I'm gonna start right where I put that needle down. And I'm gonna stitch forward three and back three. And that will lock it into place. This is the same stitch that dressmakers do when they are locking stitches in. And it will both secure your new stitching line and your stitching line from before. Now, if this were an heirloom quilt, there's more complicated ways to do this where it's more invisible. But this is absolutely perfect for this application. And then you can just snip your threads at the top without worrying about them unraveling over time. So I'm good to just keep on stitching at this point. All right, so when I lay everything out, we can see that I've quilted this entire half going on the diagonal. So next I'm gonna quilt this entire half, and then we're gonna repeat and go the other direction and do the diagonals going the other way. I've got about half an hour of quilting time into this point, so it's gonna take me about two hours to quilt the entire thing. We're not gonna roll the cameras for that entire time because the process is the exact same. You're just gonna do one half at a time going each way, then you're gonna turn it and do one half at a time this way and then one half that way until you have everything all together. And then when we're all done, you're gonna take your applique pressing sheet, first remove all your pins, take your applique pressing sheet and just go over to remove any of those lines from the friction gel pen. And then you're ready to bind and snuggle under this quilt. If you do not know how to bind, if you've never done that before, make sure you check out our video on how to do it. It covers absolutely everything. It's like a 40 plus minute long video because it covers how to cut your strips, how to sew them together, how to press them over, how to sew them to the front with your machine and then how to sew them to the back by hand. You certainly can also sew down by machine if you're crunched for time, but I personally prefer the look of hand stitch binding. So that's what I like to do on my quilts. So that's what I'm gonna be doing the rest of the afternoon. And I will come back just to show you the final quilted bit. But for now, I'm gonna turn off the cameras because you know what you need to know in order to finish this up. Uh, one last bit of advice before I finish quilting this off camera is that I do not recommend quilting for more than one hour straight. I'm gonna quilt for two hours straight just so we can finish this bad boy up and wrap up this video. But I'm gonna regret that later tonight possibly uh, or possibly later today, definitely tomorrow. My shoulders and my back are going to be sore. I can already feel it after about 30 minutes of this. So one hour at a time per day, it's really all you probably should do. There are ways you can make your chair more economic. I, look, I raised my chair up so I was more in line with, uh, you know, more perpendicular with the surface of my sewing machine. Um, there are tables where you can set the machine down in it, or you can just pass it off to a long armor. But I'm gonna be totally honest with you, most people making t-shirt quilts for gifts don't do it with enough time to head it off to the long armor in order to gift it on time. So that's why we ended, we're ending this series with this video. So if you are finishing it and you hope to gift it in a week or so, you're able to finish it yourself at home. But uh, we've already got those videos on binding. We already had the video on how to prepare your backing fabric and layer and baste your quilt. That's in our beginner quilting video tutorial series. You can watch those for free. So we did not cover that in here, but you, if you need help with that, we have videos to walk you through it step by step. All right, I'm going to leave you be for a minute. And when we come back through the magic of editing, this will be complete. All right, so I have finished all the quilting. It took just about two hours from start to finish to do in all directions to do the diagonals. And I really like the way it turned out. It is secured enough to where we don't have to worry about batting shifting, but it's not to where the quilting is taking over. The t-shirt designs are very much still the star of the show. And that white thread really does blend really well. I mean, when I'm looking straight up at the white on this dark blue, I can see it. But from a distance, when I'm looking at it in the camera, I just see the texture. So it really, 
is a very, very good choice. It is a very manageable way to quilt your quilt on your home sewing machine at home, especially if you are on a deadline. So this is an absolutely a great way to do it. If your machine did not come with a walking foot, go to the place where you purchased your machine. You likely can get one there. If you purchased it from a big box store, you're gonna to wanna to look online to see if there's a sewing machine repair shop near you. They're gonna be able to get one that will work with your machine. And it's a good relationship to have because if you sew a lot, you're gonna to need to clean your machine every six months to a year to keep it working for a long time. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this series on how to make a t-shirt quilt. I've enjoyed revisiting it. We've come such a long way uh, since we filmed that first series. At the time, you know, I was working, I hadn't an, an, like a regular job. I didn't own my own business. I did a few craft fairs here and there, um, but I hadn't had my baby yet. And when I had that little girl, I knew that my traditional crazy nine to five that really wasn't a nine to five, it was more like a nine to six. And then when you get home at night, you work like a whole lot more. And I knew that was not gonna work when I had my daughter. And that's when I started working to create Quilt Addict Anonymous and grow it into what it is today, where we're able to have 10 employees and really make this a thing. So thank you all for being with me. I know there probably are some people here who have been subscribers since that very first YouTube series, which was so, like the camera quality is so bad. It was on like an old cell phone, it was an old Android, it was before Blackberry, before iPhone, and we just, we, we made it work. You guys loved it, it got a ton of views, but now we are able to redo it and make it so it's a lot easier for you guys to see and understand what's going on, revamp that pattern, and I hope you guys enjoy making these t-shirt quilts for years and years to come. All right, thanks so much for following along. Remember the pattern you can get on our website. If you are just finding this video, like you're Googling how to quilt a t-shirt quilt, um, you're gonna want to make sure that you go to our website if you purchase an applique pressing sheet from us and a interfacing to make the t-shirt quilt interfacing, then you will get the pattern for free. So that is our way to say thanks to you for getting the supplies for us. And if you are using your own goodies, you know that's fine too. If you've already got some stuff, then you can grab the pattern and that's another way to say thanks for all the free video content. We also sell a lot of fabric. We specialize in modern contemporary fabric over at shop.quiltedictsanonymous.com. Um, if, especially if you are making this for a young person, someone who's graduating from high school or college, I guarantee they're gonna like our fabric better than like the paisleys that you're gonna find at some other quilt shops that are much more traditional. So this is a really great way to, you know, modernize it, have it be something that they're gonna really love, cherish, and use because they're gonna love every bit of it from their t-shirts to the modern quilting fabric that you're using in the stashing. As you know, we spent some time on this. We want it to be loved and cherished and adored and used. You know, that's the goal of these is to use them, you know, bring them with to those ball games, put them on that dorm bed if it's all the high school t-shirts. And it is just, it's a fun, fun series. So with that, I'm gonna let you leave you be. Make sure you check out our videos. We have hundreds, maybe thousands at this point, video tutorials on our website. And there is so much more that you can learn to do over on our website at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. So go check that out. We want to make you a better quilter. And by the way, we've got the supplies to help you do it if you so choose, but our goal is to make you a better quilter. That has been my goal from day one when we started this first series, the first version of this. It's my goal still today. So until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.